a January 8, 1974, article in the Washington Post. The sun rose at 8.27 a.m. on January 7, 1974. Children in the Washington area had left for school in the dark that morning, thanks to a new national experiment during a wrenching energy crisis. Most of the U.S. went to year-round daylight saving time beginning on January 6. It was jet black outside when her daughter was supposed to leave for school, Florence Bauer of Springfield told the Washington Post. Some of the children took flashlights with them. The change would benefit Americans in the long run, predicted Steve Grossman of the Department of Transportation. Yes, accidents in the morning darkness may become more common, he said, but longer daylight hours could mean eliminating the hazards of evening commutes, stress, anxiety, and many drivers have had a couple of drinks, as he told the Post. Outside the capital, others vowed defiance. Robert Yost, the mayor of St. Francis, Kansas said his town's council felt it was time to put our foot down and stop this monkey business. Now as the idea of permanent daylight saving time has gained some political momentum, it's probably worth a look bah. Congress had voted on December 14, 1973, to put the U.S. on daylight saving time for two years. President Nixon signed the bill the next day. The U.S. had gone to permanent daylight saving time before, during World War II. Then, too, the measure was enacted to save fuel. Permanent DST wasn't close to the wackiest idea about time floating around, Paul Mellanax, a geographer who worked at the Pentagon, came up with the idea of putting the continental U.S. on a single time zone. USA Time would apply from Bangor to Barstow, eliminate jet lag, and standardize TV schedules. His idea even got traction in Congress, via a bill from U.S. Representative Patsy Mink of Hawaii. The human being is a very adaptive animal, he said. There is no reason we have to be a slave to the sun. And yet the early morning darkness quickly proved dangerous for children, I six-year-old Alexandria girl was struck by a car on her way to Polk Elementary School on January 7, the accident broke her leg. Two Prince George's County students were hurt in February. In the weeks after the change, eight Florida kids were killed in traffic accidents. Florida's Governor, Ruby Naskew, asked for Congress to repeal the measure. 